Hello, I'm JW. This is another video in the heating series, and this particular video is also going to be in two parts. And what we're dealing with here is combination boilers and having two heating zones attached to those. Now, a combination boiler, as we've seen in previous episodes, is a boiler which doesn't have generally any kind of hot water storage. It's one where you turn on the tap and it heats the water on demand. So typically, just two pipes coming out of the boiler, those go to your radiators, and all the actual controls and everything else is done within the boiler itself. But it's possible to attach two zones, or in fact more than two if you want, to a combination boiler. But of course that does require some additional equipment and things to be installed outside of it. And the most common scenario of this is going to be where you have a normal house, and you have the upstairs radiators and the downstairs radiators controlled separately. So have a quick look at the uh, basic sort of plumbing setup to start with and then we'll cover the actual electrical wiring. And there's actually a couple of different options here. This episode we're going to look at 230 volt switching, which is for a boiler which has a 230 volt input. And then next time we'll have a look at where the boiler does not have 230 volt switching. It's either going to be uh, 24 or some other voltage, so that is uh, slightly different. Now this diagram is a basic uh, overview of the heating system with a combination boiler. So I've got the boiler here. Any kind of thermostat is connected directly to the boiler, and then you've got these shoe pipes from the boiler, the flow, which is shown in red here. So that just goes out, goes to each radiator in turn, and then the blue return goes just back from each side of the radiator and goes back to the boiler. Everything else is contained inside the boiler, so the pump in there, there's usually some kind of valve to uh, divert the water through to the heating part rather than the hot water. And I say the thermostat connects directly to the boiler. So this is just a single zone, pretty much the uh, basic setup. Now, of course, we've just got two radiators here saying upstairs and down, but in reality there will be obviously several of those. Now, in terms of changing this or installing a new system with upstairs and downstairs separately, the plumbing parts involve cutting the pipe here or getting rid of that piece there and installing two two-port valves. So just draw those in like that. Upstairs goes to one valve. And then rather than the same pipe going around the whole house, that just does the upstairs there. And then your downstairs goes onto the other valve. And then here you just have a branch in the pipe there, so it goes to the two valves. So if the valve here is open, water can flow to the upstairs radiators. And if this one is open, it can flow to the downstairs ones. The return is just a single pipe as before. Maybe join at that or maybe join at the boil or whatever else. So I've uh, got two of those there. Now this is not an electrical item, but there is another plumbing part you would need. If both of these are closed, then of course no water can actually flow. That could be a problem because most boilers have an overrun facility so that when the boiler is actually turned off, the pump continues running for a while longer just to dissipate any remaining heat. If the valves are both closed, of course that can't happen. So you would also need to install a bypass valve in there. All that does is it's a mechanical device so that when the valves here both close, the pressure here increases, then this will open and allow water to flow through there, just so you don't have the pump working against a closed outlet. I say that's just a mechanical thing, so not involved with the electrical part, but uh, just put that in there for completeness. Now in terms of the electrical part, the thermostat connected to the boiler is going to go away, and instead of a single thermostat, we will actually need two thermostats, one for each of the two valves we've got here, and we'd also need some kind of wiring centre as well. So we've got our two thermosets there. All of these wire into the wiring centre, which is basically a big junction box. There will also be a cable coming from the two valves, which again goes into the same thing as well. And then to control the boiler, yep, there's another cable from here, goes over to the boiler like that. Now, if you just had the combination on its own, the power would come in generally from a 3 amp FCU with a little fuse inside, that would normally go directly to the boiler, but in this particular case you're probably going to want to relocate that, or at least relocate the wiring from it. So that can be there, and there'll be a cable coming from this going to the wiring centre as well. And the idea of that is that when you turn this off, it doesn't just disconnect the boiler, it also disconnects all the thermostats and the valves and the entire system, so that's your single point of isolation. What you do not want is a cable going to the boiler and then another one going to other parts of the system because that could result in turning something off, doesn't disconnect all of it. That would be obviously dangerous for people who have to work on the system or service the boiler. 
In terms of thermostats, they could either be permanently wired in items, in which case they'd have a long wire going to upstairs and one to the downstairs, or more commonly these days it would just be a radio receiver unit. You can just put both of those next to each other there, and then the actual thermostats are linked by radio to those. That also covers things like the Nest and Hive and all of those smart things, which you can get and are fairly popular now. Now let's have a look at the electrical part of this, and to start with, let's have a look at the components there. So in the middle here we've got a wiring centre, just shown here as a strip of terminals numbered 1 to 10. We've got our two zone valves there, one for the upstairs and one for the downstairs, just mark 1 and 2 there. And of course we've got our two thermostats as well, number 1 and number 2. And so these could either be a actual thermostat or they could be just a receiver unit such as the hive, nest or whatever else. On the left there we've got the boiler. And this is a 230 volt input boiler, so we've got the line neutral and earth connections, and then the switched line, which is what activates the heating. And as we saw previously, the supply for this will come from that 3 amp fuse connection unit on the left there. Now there's got a lot of wires involved here, but we're just going to build this up gradually. And although there are a lot of wires, it is fairly straightforward if you just do it in stages. So to start with, we're going to put in a link between some pairs of terminals there. So between 1 and 2, 3 and 4, and 5 and 6. That's just so we can have more space to put the wires in, because there's quite a lot of wires going in, so it just makes that easier. So put those three links in there, so it's going to be the line, neutral, and the earth in those three points there. Next we need to connect the power, so from the 3 amp fuse connection unit we're going to have the line, neutral, and earth coming in there. So that's just the brown, blue, and the green and yellow wires just going into the terminals there. And then all of the items other than that need a permanent line supply. So we've got one going to the boiler there, one going to each of the thermostats, and one going to each of the two zone valves. Now these are all brown wires apart from the zone valves where we're actually connecting the grey wire to permanent line. The valves do have a brown wire, but that's the one that actually turns on the motor inside. So of course we don't want to connect that to permanent line because if we did, the valve would be permanently open and of course not do anything. So connecting the grey wire to a permanent line in this case. The next thing we need to add is in the thermostat receivers we need to put a small link between line and number one. And this is because this receiver, which is based on the Hive variety and is also commonly used on a standard backplate for lots of others, as supply the contacts inside are not connected to any voltage so you can describe those as volt free. And all that means is that they're just a set of switches which don't have anything connected to them. Now as we're using 230 volt switching here because our valves run on 230 volts we need to put line in to at least one side of the switch so just connecting line and one together which means that when the thing switches on it will switch a 230 volt output which we can use for various purposes so just a link there between L and 1 in both of the thermostat receivers. Next we need to add the neutral connections and everything has a neutral so we've got the blue wires there one goes to the boiler one to each of the two zone valves, and of course one to each of the thermostat receivers as well. So they're just coming from the neutral terminal in the wiring centre to the neutral terminal in the various other pieces of equipment. And in a similar way, everything else needs an earth connection as well, so that's the green and yellow wires, so again going to the earth terminal in the boiler, the two valves. Now the thermostat receivers don't have an earth shown in this diagram, and in reality most of them are actually plastic, so they don't actually need one. However, in a real installation you would still have an earth core to connect at the various thermostat devices. There's usually just a spare terminal included where you can attach that. We're not going to show it in this diagram because it obviously makes it a bit more cluttered and a bit more difficult to see what's going on. But again, it's just connecting all of the earth terminals to the earth terminals in the wiring centre. Now the valves generally come with the wire attached and that is a 5 core flex. And the other two we haven't connected yet are the brown and orange wires. Now the orange wire is the switched output, and we're going to connect both of those to terminal 9 in the case of this one. Those are what will eventually connect to the boiler. And then the brown wire from each one is what will actuate the motor inside and open the valve. So we're going to connect those to 7 and 8. And we're going to do them separately because of course we want to be able to control each valve separately so we can have independent control of the two zones of heating. Now that is actually the bulk of the wiring completed. All we need to add now are three wires. The first of which is between the switched output of the valve, which is the orange wires, and the switched input on the boiler. So that's just a single wire between terminal 9 and SL in the boiler. And then the other two is the switched output from the thermostat receiver. That's actually terminal number 3. 
and we need two of those, one from each receiver. So we're going from terminal 3 on the top one there, that goes over to number 7, which connects to the zone 1 valve there, and pretty much the same for the downstairs section, so that's from terminal 3 on receiver 2. That goes to terminal 8 there, and you see that's connected to the zone 2 downstairs valve. Now for this bit we'll see how this would actually work when various things turn on, and we're going to highlight the relevant wires in red here, and essentially the ones I highlight in red are those which will become live at 230 volts when various things are switched on. So as we've got it here, this is in the sort of off condition, so no heating is turned on anywhere, it's just sort of sitting there idle. And if you have a look at the uh, top receiver there, number one, when the heating is required for that one, the switch moves across and power comes out on pin three, and we see that they're going to terminal seven in the wiring centre. That's connected to that brown wire to the valve, so again power goes onto that one. And now the motor inside this valve will open, so water can then flow into that particular zone. When the valve is fully open there's a switch inside which is activated and that connects the orange wire on the output there to the permanent line coming in on the grey. So the result is that we have permanent line 230 volts on terminal 9 in the wiring centre there. And of course terminal 9 is connected to the switched input on the boiler. So now the boiler will switch on and heat the water. That water will be circulated through the system but only go to zone 1 of course zone 2 is currently closed off. Now the situation with zone 2 is pretty much exactly the same, it just controls the other valve. So again this is in the sort of default state here, and we can see there that the switch in receiver 2 moves across to the on position. So again we get 230 volts coming out on terminal 3 there. That goes to number 8 in the wiring centre, and of course number 8 is connected via that brown wire to the 2 port valve for zone 2. Now the motor in that valve is activated, which will open the valve, and just as with the other zone, once that's fully open, a switch inside will connect the grey input wire at 230 volts to the orange output wire. So the end result then is that terminal 9 in the wiring centre becomes live at 230 volts, and that connects to the boiler input. Boiler turns on, and now it's circulating water, but only going into zone 2, because of course zone 1 is off and that valve is closed. And the final part of this course is that if both zones actually require heat, so in this case we've got uh, both of the thermostat receivers on, all of the wires highlighted in red here become live, so both valves are open, but of course there's only a single wire going back to the boiler, it doesn't actually matter which one's powering it, because again the boiler switches on either way, and now water is heated and circulates through both zones, as both of those valves are now open. So the basic essence of what's doing here, we've got a each zone has its own thermostat, which basically provides power to the valve for that particular zone. Switch inside connects 230 volt input on the grey to the orange output. That connects to the boiler, and then that turns the boiler on. Now we're only showing two zones here, but in theory you could extend this to as many zones as you wanted. You just simply need to duplicate what we've got here. So if you want another zone 3, you'd have a third receiver unit and another valve for that zone. That would wire up exactly the same as we've got here, so the output from the receiver unit go to the brown input on that valve, and then the switched output on orange from that valve always goes back to that number 9, which then links to the boiler switched input. Now the thermostat or receiver units we've shown here are based on the standard backplate, and this is used by Hive and several others. Some manufacturers like Nest have a different terminal arrangement, but for those just a question of checking in the instructions which terminal is which, they will all have a permanent line and neutral input so they can obviously be powered and then you just need to identify which terminal is the one which activates when heating is required. So in terms of other devices there may be different numbered terminals there, but the principle is exactly the same. You just want to switch something on and off on the appropriate terminal there. And this also applies if you had a wired thermostat actually in each room. The only difference would be the cable of course will be considerably longer because it would have to go all the way to the particular location. If it's a mains powered thermostat again it would have pretty much exactly as we've got here the permanent line and neutral going in, and then a switch line coming back. If it's a battery powered item, again it's pretty much the same, the only difference is that wouldn't require a neutral connection, you would just have two pins on the back which connect together, and that would be the line input in brown here, and then the switched line coming out, which is what's shown as terminal 3 on this one. So this can pretty much be used with any kind of thermostat, whether it's battery powered mains or wireless or wired, it's just really a question of identifying the appropriate terminals from the instructions provided. So that's two zones on a combination boiler, and most importantly this video has only covered where the input to the boiler is a 230 volt input. 
Now most boilers do have 230 volt inputs uh, but of course there are those that don't. If you've got one that doesn't have that then this is not an appropriate uh, method. We'll actually look at that in the next part of this particular video. And of course if you put 230 volts into somewhere it's not designed for, it's going to cause a load of expensive damage. So 230 volts we've covered this time and next time say we'll have a look at where it's some other voltage or something that's not appropriate for main switching. But until then, thanks for watching.